Full Committee, um, Mr. Lucas, for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate the importance of this hearing also. All of us who live on the east side of the Rockies on the Great Plains from Canada to Texas understand uh, how challenging the weather can be. Dr. Weaver, uh, Dr. Bevins, we've heard about the tornado damage caused in 2011 and how NWERP has changed in leadership and coordination from when the program was last reauthorized. Could you compare where we were a decade ago to where we are now? And what have we done well? And what's the singular area that needs to be, needs the most improvement to, or our focus as a committee? Sure, that's, that's a, a very interesting question. So NWERP's inception originally, uh, it was led by OSTP. Uh, in 2015, it was moved to NIST, as you as you highlighted, and um, you know I think that gave giving it a permanent home, and also the fact that NIST is 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 more of a user of a lot of the information and, and is, is on the ground dealing with the impacts and trying to understand that uh, is a good pull of information from from the other agencies, and so the coordination I think is going well in that structure. Um, there are several successes that um, that 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 I, I think we've had. I mean, one is our, our tropical cyclone coordination plan. That's been very important uh, to guide our activities. Um, you know, we've we've uh, conducted a couple of investigations and in post windstorms. The Joplin tornado has come up with great recommendations. I, I mentioned one of those about tornado design earlier in the hearing. We're currently um, uh, doing a Hurricane Maria investigation, which is very comprehensive and inter interdisciplinary, and will. Um, provide um, uh, many recommendations for the entire nation, not just for Puerto Rico. Um, as far as challenges go, I think one of the unique things about windstorm hazards is that we're operating in a situation uh, where the climate is not stationary. So with earthquakes, you know, you don't really have much changing. With some other hazards, you don't have much changing. But in the windstorm environment, we have this, this you know, evolving climate system, and it's really hard to pin use the historical data to get an accurate portrayal of the risk when things are shifting so quickly. And so I think that's that's a major challenge for us to try to understand, to stay ahead of that um, with, with the, the building codes. So thank you. Dr. Bevan. Yes, thank you very much. I think um, to me, the, the challenges that we have are around the sharing of data. We're actually doing a really great job, but around sort of interoperability of data sets and uh, the, um, as, as Dr. Weaver mentioned earlier, the ability for different teams going in from different directions and taking data and being able to coordinate all of that. The, the NSF sends these teams out. We are able to do um, rapid um, grants for people to go out and take data when they're needed. And then we also have these uh, reconnaissance teams that we can send out. And I think just uh, assembling all of the data and making it readily available is a big challenge. Absolutely. Uh, back to you, Dr. Weaver. Can you please discuss how NIST is working with NOAA to improve the data and methods for tornado hazard mapping and damage modeling through the HOUSES program? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I, I believe you said with NOAA. Right? Was that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, so uh, we serve on a wind speed estimation committee. We have our engineers that serve with NOAA, uh, and and NOAA leads this wind speed standard estimation committee. And and as I mentioned previously, um, one of our lead investigators from the Joplin, Missouri tornado is is very prominent um, and and uh, actively supporting um, that committee uh, to develop recommendations and to develop um, science that can be used uh, for national tornado design uh, for infrastructure and for other critical facilities. And so that, that's principally how we partner with them on, on the tornadoes. Dr. Graham, in the remaining time I have, can you discuss with us, how does FEMA ensure that it meets its workforce demands, especially as the windstorm hazards are increasing in frequency and intensity? How do you get enough people there? Do you have enough people there? Sure, thank you. Yeah, uh, certainly certainly the, the, the amount of work that, that FEMA has in front of us every year is a tremendous amount of work, uh, whether it's responding to disasters or mitigating disasters or preparing uh, for, uh, for disasters. Uh, we have an outstanding cadre uh, of 
resources to respond to disasters. You know, through through giving an example, throughout the um, throughout the uh, pandemic, FEMA has had to really uh, change its posture on how we do business, and that is including uh, how we respond to disasters and how we run programs like the Windstorm Impact Program. So range across the board, how do we deploy people, find new innovative ways to do things? So for example, we have found, you know, technology enables us to deliver our programs. It also enables us to uh, deliver our disaster assistance. We have uh, programs such as FEMA Corps, uh, groups of young people who are just excited and outstanding, who get out in disasters and, and help our disaster survivors uh, recover. Uh, 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 just uh, you know, a, a wealth of challenge, but a, a wealth of uh, a wealth of programs and uh, uh, innovation, and being nimble on our feet to get people out to uh, help the survivors. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Madam Chair. My time's expired. Thank you, and with that, we're going to recognize. Um